I'm going to attempt to patch in a wood chip wallpaper using texture. What it is, a customer don't want the paper removed, so some of the paper come off, it was loose, so I took the loose stuff off. I put a seal in there, a PVA, I allowed that to dry, um, nothing bubbled up, so I give it another coat, I allowed that to dry, and then we're going to attempt to try and patch in the pattern with texture because we can't get hold of this particular wood chip paper at the moment. I'll show you the, um, the wood chip. There we are. This is a pattern, uh, the wood chip wallpaper. It looks quite similar to a stipple effect, but not quite a stipple effect. So I'm going to go up into the area where I'm working and I'm going to attempt to patch it in. So stay with me for the video. Any questions as normal, please let me know. Any suggestions, I would love to hear you. Um, and enjoy the video. We're going to attempt now to blend a wood chip paper in. So what we've done now, we've got the wood chip mess in there. And what I've done, I've made good the area. I put some corner beads on. As you can see here. Yeah? Um, I filled out the area. So it's all as one wall. The wood chip you see there does not like to come off the wall and as you noticed where I filled in against the wood chip wallpaper I've blended the pattern in and what I've done and this is very important when you've filled out and, and smoothed it off sponges the filler into the existing pattern so there's no lip or no step, the same as when you patch in a stipple ceiling. So where the filler meets the pattern, you don't want any step. So you just use a, when a filler's gone off slightly, you just use a damp sponge and you blend it in. Yeah, so it's all smooth, so there's no lip. So what we're gonna do now is, once we mixed up the texture, we're gonna use the stipple brush to apply the texture to try and resemble the wood chip wallpaper and then when the texture is slightly gone off 30 minutes or so we're going to use a flat a corking tool a corker these are available on the internet and what we're going to do we're going to lace back or flatten out the texture slightly to hopefully resemble the wood chip effect if you haven't got a corker, you can use a plasterer's trowel, but don't tell a plasterer, or you can use a wide filling knife just to lace back, cork out, flatten out the texture once we applied it to our area. What I'm going to use for this now is the Artex Textured Finish, which is um, a drywall compound or a texture finish. This is for creating patterns. I use the Premier one detects to fill out. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to mix this texture finish. I'm going to mix it to a thick consistency as per the instructions on the back of the container. Um, so I'm going to mix it in with clean cold water. See now I've mixed the uh, texture to a thick consistency. So we're going to leave that for five minutes. So always mix the texture up thick and then water it down to the consistency required after you mix it thick. Because mix it up thick it helps take the lumps out. As you can see, I have quite a bit of an area to blend in the wood chip paper. Yeah, let's take a closer look at this pattern. It is quite similar to a stipple, but not quite. The pattern itself, the finish on this wood chip is not like a dribbly pattern, but then it's not like a super spiky pattern. So the key is to mix down your texture to a consistency that would resemble the finish, as in the case with a stipple. For the stipple up there, I noted the texture of the original, this consistency of the original texture. So I mixed the fresh texture to patch up similar to that. Also, because we filled in to bring it to a level of the existing pattern and I've blended it in with a wet sponge so there's no steps or lips. 
so it's like a smooth continuous this filler once dry has become very porous so we don't want to put texture or plaster or anything directly onto this so what I've done I've used PVA and I've sealed it yeah PVA bonding and yeah PVA bonding when you're mixing your texture down to the uh, to achieve the correct consistency to blend in the pattern or make the pattern in a thick state always add small amounts of water first yeah small amounts of water first mix this in and check the consistency and you just keep on going adding small amounts of water we've transferred the texture into a wider paint trough this allows me to get my stipple brush and dab it in without any inhibitions yeah so what I'm going to do I'm not going to roll this texture onto the wall what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dab it on and see if I can resemble the pattern no I'm going to just do a little sample area use my stipple brush I'm going to dab it into the don't dab you know just dab the rubber prongs in yeah you don't want to go over the top so I'm just going to dab it in and let's see what we got Well, as you can see there I am crowded it and this pattern is quite random and what I'm going to do is when this texture has gone off I'm going to flatten it out slightly to try and resemble the pattern here yeah so I'm going to carry on now I'm going to dab all this area and I'll come back to you with a second as you can see now I've done quite a few areas and if you look at the pattern it's quite spiky quite thick and messy it's not it's just random the stipple is random it's not like I'm blending in a stipple ceiling I've just randomly done this yeah so what we're going to do we're going to allow this to dry off for about 30 minutes so it's still a little bit pliable only slightly pliable but we're able to flatten it out slightly to try and resemble the existing pattern you see there you see that's quite light so as I said I never tried this before to patch in a wood chip but the customer wanted the wood chip remaining on there so I took off the loose wood chip and blended it in so you see the pattern is just random it's neither you nor there. We're not looking for uniform. So I'm going to allow this to go off now before I go to the next stage, which is feathering a corking out or flattening out or lacing back. I've left this texture now for I say about 50, 60 minutes for an hour. As you can see now it's gone a little bit firmer, but it's still slightly pliable. That's what we want. We don't want it too wet. In fact, I'm quite impressed with the um, with this uh, Artex, um, you know, for holding off. So it allows you time to create a pattern as long as you've got the background um, sealed and, you know, to help diminish any porosity. So now, what we're going to do now, we're going to lace this back and flatten it out slightly to try and blend in the pattern and exist the pattern in. Also, we're going to use a damp sponge as well to blend in any overspill of pattern that might look out of place. So we need a bucket of water, a sponge, a flat edge like a corker or a plastering trowel, and a water brush. And what we do is we get the water brush and we just keep on wetting the edge, both edges of our tool so texture does not stick to this when we're drawing it down or across the wall so only very lightly just go over the surface skim over the top of the surface yeah we're taking all those spikes down and flattening them out 
you go up or down whichever way but keep your your corker or your trowel nice and wet so the texture doesn't stick so Blend it in the pattern here, yeah, or you flatten it out. But if you look at some parts of the wall, like this for instance, you know, it looks false. And especially here, yeah, when I've dabbed on too much texture, that looks false. So what I'm going to do is get a, a wet sponge, I'm going to wipe some of this away. And so I'm going to wipe some of this away, wash some of that off. Yeah, just to further blend in the pattern. Anything that looks a bit false, blend in the pattern to the existing wall. I don't know if you can hear the rain outside. Yeah, this is sunny South Wales, Cardiff to be exact. And it always rains in Wales. I love it. I like taking walks in the rain, especially sometimes in the evening. I like a bit of uh, ghost hunting. Um, you want to check out my other channel, my alternative channel called Elyite, E L Y I T E, on YouTube. I've got some different uh, types of videos there, doing product reviews, ghost walks. I'm going to take my sponge, wet it some more, and I'm just going to slightly go over this pattern very slightly, see if I can bring it down slightly again. So that will look shoey. As you can see, I've never done this before. It's basically, you know, when you're patching up something, you see what you're patching up, and you've got to try and resemble that pattern, basically. And finally, using the water and a brush, I'm going to soften the pattern out slightly. So I'm just going to brush over the pattern. As you see, the texture is quite stiff enough, so it's not affecting anything. So now we're just sort of creating the bubbly bubblier effect of the original wood chip finish. Let's take out any of the uh, sharp edges. And uh, it's looking pretty good now. I'm quite happy with this. I think I'm going to make myself a nice cup of tea. Because no one else has made me a cup. So I'm going to make myself a nice cup of tea when I've done this. So I'm just going to go over all the area. You can see how firm the texture has gone, but it's not gone dry, dry, dry. You know, you're still slightly workable. And what I'm doing here, I'm just creating like a soft bubbly effect over the finish to resemble the soft bubbly effect over there. Are we quite happy with this? I think we are quite happy with this. So I'm going to finish the whole job now, all these wall areas.